Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 2010 horror zombie apocalypse film, Devil's Playground. Now, before I get around to sharing more of my thoughts on this film, I would like to give a special shout out to Steven for requesting this review. And if there's another film, TV show, or topic that you would like to see me discuss in the future, feel free to donate to either my PayPal or to my Patreon. The link to both is in the video description down below, and I will try to get to your request as soon as I possibly can. Now, Devil's Playground is one of those films that, in a lot of ways, it's very cliched. You've seen this kind of film done before. In a lot of ways, it's like a poor man's version of 28 Days Later. It's got the fast-running zombies. It's got some kind of uh, vaccine or, some, or something like that that went awry and caused an infection that led to people becoming zombies. But this time, I guess, was a little bit more of a British flair. Because this is a, a UK independent uh, horror film. It's directed by Mark McQueen. And the direction for this film, it's not going to win any awards. But I thought it was fine. It was, it was, it was decent. It was serviceable. It wasn't completely naff. Like it was, it was actually pretty competent especially when it comes to uh, the various different sequences involving the infected uh, running or jumping after uh, people and uh, very, the, the few little bits of action that the film did have. Uh, it was, I, I, I would say it, it was pretty well directed. I mean, considering the fact that it's a relatively low budget, independent uh, zombie horror film, and the fact that it's the kind of thing that you would find direct to video, the end result when it comes to the direction could be a hell of a lot worse. I even think it's actually pretty decent when it comes to uh, establishing a particular mood or an atmosphere. Uh, and yeah, I think the direction, while it's not anything that's spectacular, I do think it stands out ultimately in, in a good way. Then you have a, a screenplay by Bart Rispoli, and the script is honestly why this film doesn't live up to its full potential and become a gem in the zombie uh, subgenre of horror because of the fact that it's too tired and predictable and it just takes itself too seriously. I'm okay with some grit. I'm okay with some realism when it comes to these kind of films, but I think a lot of these movies are at their best when you have screenplays and plots and characters that have charm and have charisma and you have a, uh, some moments of levity to break up the monotony of the serious uh, zombie outbreak. And you don't really get that with this script. I will give the script credit though for a number of things. I think having uh, the pharmaceutical companies uh, uh, hitman of sorts in uh, Cole be the main lead and have this guy um, be infected fairly early on in the story and having him only able to have access to a limited amount of serum to uh, prevent the infection from spreading I think that's a nice touch when it comes to the script and the story. It definitely does add a sen extra sense of urgency uh, to uh, the overall plot. I like the idea of the zombies being uh, a test uh, a subject, so to speak, that took some kind of pharmaceutical drug and then it went wrong. And I like the, the fact that when it presents itself, the infection shows itself in, in a visible way, but in a way that's uh, kind of cool. It, it makes your veins all black and bulging out. Um, that definitely creates a pretty striking uh, visual. And I do appreciate that it's a very visceral script and story for the most part. There's a lot of blood. There's a lot of carnage. There's a significant loss of life. 
it does a good job really creating an apocalyptic vibe when it comes to uh, the overall uh, mood and atmosphere. You definitely do get a sense that things are really fucked. Um, and I didn't mind the whole stuff with Angela being pregnant and her being an outlier in terms of her not reacting to the drug. So that also added another sense of urgency because she has to live in order for a cure to potentially be created. So she needs to uh, uh, make it through uh, this, uh, this uh, horror, so to speak. So that added some extra incentive when it comes to the, the plot but there's a lot of other stuff that's just very bland and milk toast and boring and and uh, just really just feels like padding and soap opera bullshit when it comes to the the characters. And I understand what the writer is trying to do. He's trying to provide these characters with some depth and and something to make them stand out more uh, when it comes to a, a typical zombie movie. But it just comes across as something you would see on EastEnders or Neighbors, but the zombie version. You know, it's just it's just something that to me doesn't really benefit the script and the overall film that much. It just makes things more boring because there's large chunks of the script and the overall uh, film where it's just the human drama stuff. And I didn't really feel it was that compelling or that interesting. Also, the human characters, they kind of bleed together in terms of uh, their arcs because they don't really have a lot of personality or charm. And that's another problem. It just takes itself so seriously. It's, it's so overly dramatic to the point where it's downright melodramatic. Uh, and honestly kind of laughable at times because of how melodramatic the script and the story is. This isn't something that needed to be taken dead seriously. Like There's a couple lines of dialogue where it, it seems like the writers are having a little bit of fun with the overall concept and the idea of it, but that's it. Uh, for the most part, there really isn't a lot of that uh, uh, approach when it comes to uh, the script and 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 the and the story, and there is also a lot of moments where there isn't a ton of variety when it comes to the zombie attacks. Yes, it's nice that they move around real fast and they're quick and they're agile and it's they're doing parkour and doing stunts and stuff, but. When it comes to the way that they attack people, just very generic, almost seems like they ran out of money when it comes to the zombie attacks. So they don't really have as much bite as you would personally like when it comes to this kind of movie. And when it comes to the scenes where the zombies are getting uh, attacked themselves or getting beaten up or getting uh, taken out by uh, the survivors, it's... It, it's honestly something that, despite it being visceral, it becomes pretty uh, bland because it's all the same. It's just blunt instruments. There's really, and maybe a gun, but that's really about it. So you don't really get a lot of creativity when it comes to uh, the survivors and the way that they fight back against the zombies or the way that they find uh, uh, ways to survive. Like, so that is also something that just makes it kind of bland and and dull and 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 drawl overall. And it's just one of those scripts that it needed to have more fun with the concept and needed to do more with the zombies in terms of uh, the the various different sequences where they're attacking people, uh, some gut ripping, some gut munching, some kind of extra bit of creative gore something other than what they went with which is just the bare minimum and if you're gonna have all these characters like give them all distinct engaging personalities otherwise what is even the point 
because there, the, the, there's either characters that there's not really anything about them to make you like them, or there's the typical characters that are just out for themselves and are unlikable for that uh, uh, reason. So they're unlikable because they're just selfish and they're self-serving, but they live for way too long in the running time. So it's one of those things where you're just waiting for them to get their comeuppance. And when they do, it's, it's not even that satisfying either because it takes a more, a more artistic approach where you, the zombies just surround them uh, and you hear maybe a scream or two, but that's about it. Considering how just awful these two characters were, they deserved a much uh, a more satisfying denouement, but you don't get that. So that's honestly something that I think is rather fitting for the Devil's Play for Devil's Play Playground. It's it's not very satisfying at the end of the day. So it kind of makes sense that the script isn't going to really provide a lot of moments of satisfaction uh, because that's really where you would get a lot of that. Another thing that, that I want to mention about the script is that there's just a lot of unneeded, unnecessary subplots that don't really feel like they add much to the overall plot. There's this whole thing involving Angela's brother, who's a cop, who's with his, uh, with his partner, who's infected, and they're trying to find a helicopter, and they find the helicopter only for it to be broken and useless. And the partner predictably turns at one point, but I will give uh, the screen the screenwriter credit for this. He doesn't have the turned partner kill the uh, kill the cop. the The cop actually gets away. The turned partner tries to attack him, but he actually hides successfully and manages to survive the first attack by his partner. And it isn't until later when his partner gets involved. And the cop actually is one of the last survivors because uh, he's honestly, he is the last survivor along with Angela. So it's the cop and Angela that make it to the boat uh, at the end of uh, the movie. Uh, Joe, her boyfriend, doesn't make it because he gets bit. And so he decides to sacrifice himself uh, for Angela, but the whole, even the whole thing with the boat and, and, and also just a lot of stuff involving the vehicles, like other than the, 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 the van that they're driving around in, like the stuff with the helicopter is just pointless because the helicopter didn't work. And there, that was also a whole, uh, uh, part of the, uh, plot involving Angela and uh cole is he's trying to get to the helicopter and the script does this thing where you already know that the helicopter is broken and is useless because of the whole in my opinion pretty useless cop subplot so that really takes away a, a lot of tension because now there is no necessarily uh, uh a, a race against time with the helicopter because you already know that it doesn't work um, and there's stuff involving the zombies where for some reason they do, they're afraid of water and I don't get that. I think it's just dumb. I, they're, they're just afraid of water. They don't want to be in the water. And I'm like, okay, what are these zombies related to the aliens and signs? Like, what the hell is this? This is fucking, this is dumb. This is, this is pretty stupid. Like I said, I've seen and and I've definitely dealt with worse zombie films than this, but the script is not good. And it's a prime example of why this film is just below average and pretty forgettable, to be honest. The cast, they're trying. They're doing their best considering what they have to work with in terms of the script that's pretty much bare bones. So Danny Dyer is Joe, the boyfriend of Angela. He's kind of, I think they're trying to set him up as somebody who can be a little likable, but he's honestly 
not for most of the movie. He's kind of a dick. Um, Craig Fairbrass as Cole. I I didn't mind his performance. Danny Dyer, to be honest, when it comes to the, what he's supposed to do in terms of playing the role, he does a good job too. But I I just didn't really care for his character that much. But uh, Craig Fairbrass I liked as Cole. This this heavy, so to speak, for the pharmaceutical company. Um, you also have Mayanna Bur Burring as uh, Angela. Didn't mind her. The rest of the cast, though, are pretty much one note. Kind of just blend together. Jamie Murray as Lavina. Shane Taylor as Joffrey. Bart Rispoli as Matt Mills. Um... Yeah, I've seen worse performances overall from uh, um, cast members in a movie like this, but it's still not what I would consider to be a cast that is particularly great. The cinematography by Jason Shepard is just average. It's just there. Same thing goes for the editing by Rob Hull. The music by James Edward Barker, I thought it was just too loud and overbearing at times, like with really heavy bass. And it honestly kind of hurt some scenes that it was in uh, because it physically hurt to watch those scenes because the bass is just too fucking low to the point where it's kind of irritating. Also, the sound mixing in terms of the dialogue mixed with the sound was not good. Or the sound effects. Like, it's not a very, very well-mixed film when it comes to the sound design. And, I mean, there are worse ways to spend an hour and a half of your time than Devil's Playground. But it's still not that well-paced. It's still pretty tedious and dull for a good chunk of the running time. And at best, it's, it's just average. But most of the time, it's below average. Which is why, at the end of the day, I would just call this a below-average zombie movie. It's the kind of film that you watch once and then forget about it pretty much immediately afterwards. Um, it's too bad because I think the direction is decent enough. I think there's some okay performances when it comes to the cast. And I think there's some promise here when it comes to the script and the story, but... The screenwriter just doesn't really utilize uh, the, the best elements of the script. And as a result, it just becomes something that is just very forgettable, very uh, dull, and just bland. And just not really anything that separates itself from... Any other generic direct to video, direct to streaming horror film uh, with a lot of the same uh, issues. So, yeah, it's just one of those things where I wouldn't say that I was a big fan of it, but at the same time, it's not rant worthy because it's competent enough in a, a fair number of areas. It's just another below average uh, uh, film that just ultimately didn't do a lot for me uh, in the end. But anyway, that's just my thoughts on uh, Devil's Playground. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. See ya.